So we calculated the gravitational potential energy and we showed that you can go one way or the other way, you get the same answer, it doesn't matter. But now I want to show you that the path really doesn't matter at all. One way, the other way on a straight line, or even a crazy curvy path. Let's look here at, say, there's the source mass, like the sun, and here is the test mass, like the Earth. And let's say, and this, and this is the initial R, and let's say something goes horribly wrong. The Earth goes on this path. Oh dear, mass test there. And then this would be RF. Right. How would we calculate for that difference? So you can see there's a little bit of a difference, a little farther away here than here. What you'd have to do is think of all these little DSs going along the path, or DRs, I'm sorry. And you'd have to add up for each one. So what was it we were integrating for each one, the dr dotted with the f. We could do external force or internal force. Let's do internal. I'll just draw all the f's, right? So there's an f, there's an f. It's always going to point right at um, the uh, source mass. It would all look like this. And they'd get bigger as you go closer, etc. Something like that. I think I have them pointing all the right way. There you go. You have to do all those dot products. Oh, wow, a lot of work. Right? That's why it's called, that's why people fear vector calculus. But what's interesting is the path doesn't matter. Just Ri and Rf. Even the vectors Ri and Rf don't matter. Really, just the magnitudes Ri and Rf matter. And let me show you why. You know, it's basically, I guess I can put it in words um, first. Um, the, the dr, you know, you're doing a dot product here. So you're getting the component of one along the other. The dr component perpendicular to the direction of the force um, does no work because it's a dot product. Right? So if you had it a case where it's moving exactly perpendicular to F, like right here, that little move did nothing because it wasn't really changing its radius. It was moving along a circle going around the force. And um, the dr component parallel to RT, it's RT, does all the work. So one trick you can do is to help you see this better is to not think of the complicated path, think of it as the simpler path. So here is the source mass, and say you started out here is the test mass, and say you ended up out here is the other test mass, and you took the most complicated possible trajectory like that. All those DRs, here's all that matters. How far away were you here? And you can draw a circle like that, always the same distance away. And how far were you here? And you can draw a circle like that, always the same distance away. And you can realize that since it doesn't, the path doesn't matter, all you really have to do is calculate this path. Go straight from Ri to Rf, and then walk along the circle. When you're walking along the circle, the f's are always perpendicular. So the walk along the circle contributes nothing. All that really contributes is when you're walking directly along a th uh, uh, the direction of the field. So what this tells us is that, um, that all that really matters is delta r. <laughs> delta u only depends on uh, the difference between the magnitude of Ri and the magnitude of Rf. Doesn't really care how you get there. Right? So if you're ever given a complicated problem where they give you some weird path, it's, they're probably just trying to get you to realize it's only the change in R that matters. 
And this also, this shows up when we wrote the integral before. The reason we took that dot product and just called this thing dr is basically this region. The reason we could say r hat dot dr just equals dr is because all that matters is this uh, component here, and that's really just dr. We multiplied it by 1.